Ever since ancient times, a divine spirit and his tiger roamed Korea. One of the symbols of a Zen master, a meditation master. To Westerners, Korean temples are good places to experience Buddhism and its unique culture. And to help those foreigners who are curious about Korean Buddhism, I volunteer as a Korean cultural guide whenever I can. A wind chime, simply a wind chime to make a nice pleasant sound as the wind blows, but the fish Fish is a Buddhist symbol because a fish swimming in the water never sleeps. They are intrigued by the hidden stories of Buddhism. Very important in Korean temples is Shinjung Pengwa, a very large, uh, full such painting. There will be 108 figures all together. That's the holy number of uh, Buddhism. Every corner of a Buddhist temple hides a secret symbol that not many people know of has this hand gesture, which is referring to the unity of everything. In some sense, there's an oriental philosophy trinity of heaven, earth, and humanity, and such an earth, earth standing here, humanity, and human beings, and heaven surrounding it. The one is all and all is one is basically what he is communicating. It's true, you only see what you know. Strictly speaking, I'm not a Buddhist. However, there is not a single Buddhist temple that I haven't visited in Korea. A Nutinamu or Zelkova tree, 400 years old. Trees like this are monuments in themselves, very valuable parts of a temple compound. They're regarded as kind of an ancestor figure within the temple, a living monument, a living that has witnessed all the history of the temple and still stands to bear witness. It's easy to think of Seoul as a modern city, but it's also home to many ancient temples with rich histories and culture, like the Zalkova tree. Pongwansa Temple is no different. This thousand-year-old temple was built by monk Tosan Kuksa towards the end of the unified Shila dynasty. Generally, Temples like this tend to possess valuable treasures. This here is a monumental painting of three major bodhisattvas. The Jijang Bosal, the Bodhisattva of Salvation, the Kwonseon Bosal, Bodhisattva of Compassion, Bohyan Bosal, Bodhisattva of Benevolent Action. And together they're surrounded by many kinds of symbolic guardian figures, in particular, Sanjin, Lord of the Mountains, standing front and center right here. The Sanjin is not a demon or ghost, but a spiritual god of the mountains. He is also an iconic figure in Korean culture.
Buddhist temples hold Sanshin rituals, and almost all mountains and temples have a Sanshin shrine. I just like it that it's very old, painted, uh, not, not repainted, not redone. Old paint from the Joseon dynasty, certainly more than a hundred years ago. And this, this nice old building survived the Korean War, survived the destruction. The Japanese worship the mountains, and the Chinese also have a form of Sanshin worship. But Korea is the only country where the mountain spirit is deeply embedded in its culture. Well, this is a fairly standard Sanshin painting, rather nicely done with a straight, wispy, gray beard. Uh, two Dongja boys are flanking him, one with the Taoist peaches of immortality, the other holding a fly whisk on a staff, which is actually a symbol of a Zen master, a, a master of meditation, a, a sunza, so giving that kind of rank for the Sanjin. Above that right here, the Yongji Posot mushrooms of immortality. The Sanjin is usually accompanied by a tiger. Well, the tiger is there kind of as alter ego of the Sanjin, represent the Sanjin himself, but also as a kind of Sanjin's pet or companion or enforcer agent. The Sanjin uh, can use the tiger, direct the tiger to either help human beings or to punish them uh, according to whether they have been good or bad, according if people damage the natural forest of the mountain, breaking the taboos of Sanxin, a tiger will surely come and punish them. Some regard the Sanxin as a mere superstition, but it has long stood by the people in their trials. Even though the Sanjin mountain spirit is not really Buddhist, but actually has its roots in shamanism and Taoism, but a painting like this is in the main hall of a Buddhist temple, and very prominently so. And this would only be in Korea, it's not in other Buddhist countries, but it's because the Sanjin figure is so uh, fundamental to the very roots of Korean culture itself. And Korean people never fail to acknowledge and respect the mountain spirit on this location of being on a mountain because he's the landlord and it, it's his place. As I, and he kind of represents the very roots of traditional Korean culture within this uh, imported religion, Korean Buddhism. Sanshin is part of what helps make Korean Buddhism really Korean. Scholars of the Joseon dynasty also held Sanshin rituals. It is sad to see that Korean people today think of the Sanshin as superstition. complex you can see it from space. I've worked as a tour guide for over 20 years space satellite shot you can pick out Jimmy's but I'm actually a university professor I teach tourism I used to study Eastern philosophy in the US but now I'm a Korean Sanshin expert all their life living there their entire lifetime they're related to the mountain they have a relationship they take care of the mountain the mountain takes care of them it's like a relationship like between parents and children sanjin these spirits it's like that it's a symbol of the relationship between the mountain and the human beings that live there in this way, it kind of makes sense. It's not just an old superstition, just an old story about ghosts and spirit. It kind of is, is sensible and reasonable to have a symbolic view of how we feel about this mountain living here. When I was a university student, I used to be obsessed with China's Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. It was in the early 80s when someone I met in Taiwan suggested I visit Korea.
when I first laid my eyes on Nam Moon Gate, I made up my mind to settle down in Korea. Since then, I've committed myself to visiting mountains and temples and studying Korean religions, culture, and folklore. I focused on collecting Sanshin related documents from temples in Kangwondo province and published a number of books based on those materials. These are books that I have not yet organized, collections of maps of various places all over Korea. This is the physical evidence of my legwork. This is my original photo album that I started to show photos of Korean Sanshin paintings that I found and other related artworks and related places. I would take these photos and put them in and do my own labeling, but I've been doing this for 33 years, collecting these photos. By now, I think I have around 1,500 Sanjin images, Sanjin Tenghua, Sanjin Do, uh, Sanjin Sang, statues, uh, shrines in this uh, Sanjin Gak, sort of things uh, here, 1,500. The lack of publications on Sanshin made me realize that somebody had to do this work. I could not turn away. Because these particular kind of photos fascinated me and I wanted to have it in an organized way and show the variety of all this phenomena all over Korea that I was finding in every province, every national park, every county area, just more and more and more. And, uh, I suppose the most amazing one I ever found, this one, that has nine different Sanjins in one painting collected together like a family with like grandfather, grandmother, and then their children, uh, their nine sons of the Sanjin around Korea. And this was found in a very small temple. And as far as I know, this is the only painting like this in the whole country. Pretty amazing. The past 30 years of my life, this is my life itself. This notebook, I would really never want to lose this. I would keep this forever. Uh, this is really where it all started. And still, a lot of these images are very valuable. Some of these paintings throughout this thing no longer exist or are no longer available. The Sanshin is still important in modern society. It protects humans and nature. I believe that Sanxian can also be a symbol for the ecological movements of this country, uh, green Korea, because Sanxian represents that. It represents human beings living in harmony with nature. In each one of these paintings, you can see that aspect of the human being with animals, with the uh, tree, the king of all animals, the tiger, the king of all trees, the, the red pine tree, and other natural elements all around living in harmony together. I visit this place in Seoul whenever I have free time. It's the museum. It has displays of extraordinary and rare artifacts. As always, this place captivates me. With kind of a square, almost cubic face than such that's very Northeast Asian Oriental, very different from the thin-faced Buddhas of Southeast Asia. A broad shoulders, a strong-looking body, a full chest. It looks like a, a strong man, much, much different from the Southeast Asian or Indian styles where Buddha seems very delicate and thin. In fact, Sanshin worship is a blend of various religions, including Buddhism. 
All over the world, really, there are religious artworks, painting statues and uh, all such. And generally, each religious artwork is devoted to the motifs of one religion. Very rare do you get any more than two. As far as I know, this is kind of unique to Korea and unique in this Sanshin tradition that you have elements in there of Confucianism, Buddhism, Taoism, indigenous Korean shamanism, and indigenous Korean kind of nation spirituality tied to the Dangun idea and Korean national identity. Those five different traditions represented within one painting. That is simply amazing. And there's really nothing else like this that I know of, such a multi-religious, multi-spiritual traditions in one artwork. In a way, it just evokes then all Korean spiritual culture together. <laughs> the museum isn't the only place that keeps priceless treasures. For a long time, they have survived amongst common people. Dol <laughs> Horangi. Must be a nice just for a garden piece, I suppose, but it's nice. An old straw rope. Little Buddha statues here. It's a pity that these artifacts are being forgotten, their value not recognized. I'm not Korean, but even I know what they are worth. 450 years old. Buksong Shin, the North Star Spirit, or the God of Long Life. Long Life, Su, Longevity. That's a nice classic Bunjong pot from uh, the style of about the 14th, 15th century. Nice classic Korean one. We can't put a price tag on them because what they carry is the soul of Korea. Dragon posts that would sit on top of a doorway, I think, over the moon or mm -hmm. door on the top as kind of decorative guardians. A Chung Neong, Huang Neong, yeah, uh, yeah. sort of a thing, uh, east and west uh, dragons, blue and yellow, signify the east and west and basic set of mm -hmm. just uh, good spirit for holding up the house and lifting. <laughs> Although Korea is all about being cutting edge and fast, I hope it can preserve its precious artifacts of spiritual culture. The wide variety of products and the old stuff come into a market like this because you never know what you'll find. It's often kind of surprising and you see quirky things. And it's also nice just to interact with the sellers, the, the people who man these kind of markets, grandmothers and grandfathers usually who are really into Korean cultural assets and are nice to talk to and share a little bit with. A few days later, I was given another special opportunity to see a cultural asset, Suor Kwanimdo from the Koryo dynasty. Omani, Omani, Kwansayam. Yes, we're holding the baby. So the one with a, a Bektusan scene is the only one with like a real place in Korea background. Uh, you have never done another painting that shows a real place in Korea that Kwon Seom Bosal is appearing. Mm. The east coast of Korea, Dongheian, area such as Naksansa. Naksansa. Ah, that's a special place for the appearance of of Kwon Seom Bosal. Master Wisang Josa. Uh, saw her inside an ocean cave like this. Professor Pang Mire has spent years restoring Suwar Kwanimdo and has added modern creativity to its traditional techniques. It's arguably one of the greatest masterpieces that represent Korea's spiritual culture. I think you got this very authentically. It looks 
very much like the same uh, as the Goria dynasty Sui Fonzon Dolo paintings. It's very detailed and delicate, excellent artwork in the, in the small details through such a, a wide-ranging scene. I enjoy to see these. These are very inspiring paintings, yes. I think it's quite uh, fascinating, the variations you can get and the interpretations. I learned a lot of things and I could see a wide variety of really beautiful artworks. Uh, she has a great uh, creative expression on this traditional theme. To people who are used to material culture, Korean Buddhism is a fascinating subject. That's why I want to teach others about the principles of Korean Buddhism. Korean Buddhism is very nature-oriented, much more than other kinds of Buddhism. Oriented towards nature, loving nature, using images of nature, and seeing naturalness itself as a, a primary goal of enlightenment, an aspect of enlightenment, the appreciation of nature as it is, and the understanding of natural processes, cycles, and such. Also, the Korean Buddhism is more hmm, casual, more humanistic. As a tourism professor, I suggested temple stay to the Korean government years ago to help foreigners experience the culture of Korean Buddhism. Eventually, the government accepted my suggestion and the temple stay is now an iconic cultural and tourist activity here in Korea. As someone who has explored mountains and temples all across Korea to find the mountain spirit, I am particularly fond of Gangwondo Province. Wow. Sangwonsa Temple in Odesa Mountain is a beautiful temple with rich history. It's famous as a pilgrimage site for Munsu Posar, the Bodhisattva of Wisdom. Of course, the Sanshin rests here too. Bright, vivid colors and very humanistic figures that show our real feelings and emotions uh, with them are kind of a characteristic of it. They're not too stiff and formal, not too abstract. These kind of Korean artworks include a lot of nature, a lot of trees, uh, waterfall, mountain backgrounds, animals such as the tiger, birds, flowers, natural elements. What kind of advice would the Sanshin give to people in this day and age? Sanshin is an excellent kind of traditional image that evokes feelings in people of, yes, nature's important. Nature is kind of sacred. Now also, it's a symbol of ecology, a symbol of human beings living in harmony together with nature kind of arrangement or a deal we have in a sense. Sanshin represents the idea that if we take care of nature and we don't let nature be damaged or destroyed, then nature will also take care of us. We'll have good health and we'll have prosperity.
qualities of wisdom, clarity, 